afternoon everyone. We are here at the Alabama Nature Center and we are here to talk to you about map turtles. So um, we are outside the building here. I was going to do this and where map turtles and good map turtle habitat here on the property but as you can see we're having quite the downpour. Um, so I'm here on the balcony of the Natureplex but it is interesting. We can. I've been watching the rain garden fill up. So we did a Facebook Live um, about the rain garden so you can learn more about it here. It is definitely doing its job today. Water from the building coming from these gutters or going um, down into this ditch that we've turned into a dry stream bed and flowing all the way down to the rain garden where it is pooling there and the plants can be sucking up that water. So that's really cool that we can see that today. Um, so check out that live naturalist chat about rain gardens. Today, however, we are going to talk about map turtles. And so this is a really cool turtle species or group of turtle species that are found here in Alabama. And I wanted to share um, the map turtles that we have at the Alabama Nature Center with you and talk to you a little bit about them. So if you have any questions, please write in the comments and so I can see it and answer your questions as we go along. All right, so, come on. All right, I do want to point out this book once again. So we'll be looking at a few things in this book. Uh, Turtles of Alabama by Geyer, Bailey, and Mount, and this is the most up-to-date uh, index of turtles here in Alabama that we currently have all the information about them. So take a look at this book. If you're interested in learning more about turtles, this is the book. And there's also lizards and snakes, and um, hopefully we will have some of the amphibian versions of this book coming out soon. So here's our turtles. Here's our map turtles that we have to show you today. Now here at the Alabama Nature Center, when we talk about turtles, we like to talk about the fact that turtles do not make good pets. And so you often see turtle species, um, usually the red-eared sliders, the most common one seen at pet stores here in, uh, here in Alabama and other states that allow turtle sales. So turtles, um, besides the fact that they don't stay small for forever, these are some of the smallest species of turtles that we have. You know, they stay small. These and the musk turtles stay pretty small, but those red-eared sliders, they get huge. And so they need a huge space to live in. So some of our uh, larger turtle species, we have huge uh, tanks for them. They're big stock tanks full and they are several hundred gallons full of water and so that's what a full-grown red ear slider is going to need along with specialized lighting, um, heat, and all kinds of other special equipment. So keep that in mind. Turtles are also long-lived and so that red-eared slider is probably going to live about 40 to 50 years if it's taken care of correctly. So that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking about getting a pet, that you're going to have it for an extremely long time. Most people who get these pet turtles for their children, uh, we have seen that children get kind of bored of them. These are not like cuddly animals. I can't cuddle, cuddle it and love it. They're used to being handled and you can see guess what it doesn't really like to be touched and mess with um, so a lot of times the novelty wears off and then people want to go and release their turtle back in the wild but that can cause problems um, including releasing turtles in places where they aren't they shouldn't be um, and so that's how red ear sliders have become a problem in some areas where they weren't previously found but you can also spread diseases and things like that um, so it's it, you, a lot of times the turtle, you can have areas where there's so many turtles, usually nice dump off, dump off spots where so many people have dumped their pet turtles that you have too high of a population of these turtles and all kinds of turtles mixed together and that's when diseases break out and things like that. So just some things to consider 
They're hard to take care of. Or they at least require a whole lot of work, more work than your dog and cat. They're not cuddly and lovable. Um, they do get big and they live a long time. Um, and don't release them. You can't just go and dump them and release them somewhere out in the wild. You need to find them a new home. Um, so that is why we don't recommend people getting turtles as pets. Now, for the map turtle, uh, we'll talk about a few tur general turtle species. <coughs> so turtles are known for having a nice shell. And so the top of the shell is called the carapace. The bottom of the shell is called the plastron. And it is fused to their spine. <coughs> so if we look in here, this is a turtle shell. So when turtles die, <coughs> excuse me, when turtles die, um, they're going to leave their bones and their shell behind while their body decays. So this is one that was found. This is an Alabama map turtle. And if we look in here, you can see its spine is fused to its shell there. So therefore, turtles cannot take off their shell. It grows with them, kind of like their bones. And so this hard, protective thing that they, that they live in is, is very unique and valuable to them. So they are a, vertebra a vertebrate, so they have that backbone. And they are a reptile. So being a reptile means several things. One, they lay their eggs on land. These guys are, turtles are egg layers. They'll have a leathery kind of shell over their egg. They are cold blooded. So they have to find ways to either cool off or warm up. It can't be, their body doesn't do that for them. They have to go out in the sun or go find a nice shady spot. Speaking of sun, look at that. Just like Alabama for the sun to come out, right when it was just previously coming down buckets. So these guys are, are cold blooded. They lay their eggs on land. They have scales as their skin covering. And they don't go through metamorphosis. So like your amphibian friends that go through metamorphosis, these do not. They're born little tiny versions of their parents. All right, so some other things. They do not have, oops, <laughs> they do not have teeth. So let's look up close here. This is Geo, Geo the map turtle. They have <coughs> like a beak modeling nicely for us. You don't see a very prominent beak on him, but he does have this sharp, Oh, yeah, open your mouth again. They do have this sharp bones um, around their jaw, and they can have sometimes a more prominent beak than others. They produce very little saliva. So aquatic turtles produce very, very little saliva, so they have to eat their food underwater to wash down their food. And with turtles, you can find varying degrees of um, whether they're omnivores, they're usually omnivores, and they kind of sway back and forth. So sometimes they start out very carnivorous, need lots of protein to grow, and become more herbivorous as they get older. There are some turtles that are very, very much carnivorous, these being a group of turtles that are very much carnivorous. So that's another thing that um, some people will get pet turtles and think that they can survive off lettuce and that doesn't really work out so well. It's not what they're designed to eat. And so we'll talk to you about what we feed these guys to keep them nice and, and healthy. <clears throat> so we're going to start off talking about Geo because Geo is a northern map turtle, also known as a common map turtle. Now all of our turtle species, all of our map turtle species in Alabama are protected. You have to have a special permit to possess them and I'll tell you why we have each of these. Now for the, this is a, a common map turtle. We have 13 species of map turtle in the eastern United States. They're all found in the eastern United States. That's what makes up that whole group of map turtles. And then here in Alabama we have 
six species of map turtle that are found here in Alabama. And we'll, we have three slash maybe four, and I'll explain that in a second, representatives here at the Nature Center. Now Geo here, let me show you. <coughs> I think I sucked up a bug, guys. So I apologize for that. It's just part of being outside in Alabama in the summertime. All right, so if we look at our book here, here's the northern map turtle. Here's a little baby northern map turtle. They're called map turtles because of these beautiful designs on their backs that look like contours or markings of rivers or streams that you would see on a map. If we look at Geo, if he will be still, <coughs> we can just barely find some underneath his shell. And so these turtles are, they're a small turtle, they're a beautiful turtle. They have been exploited by humans for a long time, wanting their beautiful shells. Geo here was found with kind of a messed up shell. So as a, he was about a year old when he was found and his shell had not softened or it was still soft, it hadn't hardened properly. And as you can see, you know, it's not the prettiest shell. So we don't know quite what's wrong with him but he never got a really good shell. And so it tends to be wiggly in some areas. Let's get a good look here. Put him in the water where he's more comfortable. So it's kind of wiggly and soft in some areas. And it, you can't see his pattern. It's always been a bit cloudy and murky and things like that. And so because of this, um, he, whatever is wrong with him, he would not have done well out in the wild. So that's why we have him here. So this is Geo. He is the common map turtle or northern map turtle. Let me show you a range of where they are. So this is their range here in Alabama. And we are actually the most southern part of their range. So this is their range <coughs> across North America. Sorry about that. So we're right here at the most southern part of their range. So being on the edges of their range means that there's not as many here um, as there are in some areas. Now, Geo here, where are you going? Would, uh, males will typically eat lots of insects and small aquatic invertebrates. Females are much, much larger than males. Much, much larger. And they typically have a more broad head and they use that broad head to eat a lot of snails and mussels and things like that. Now these turtles like slow moving rivers, creeks, um, maybe even lakes and ponds, but typically larger bodies of water. That's where these can be found. And they're very aerodynamic, made for swimming. Look at these nice webbed feet. If I'll show them. Yeah, definitely made for swimming long claws for, for digging up um, even down at the bottom of a muddy lake or something like that looking for little invertebrates things like that all right so that is our northern map turtle let's go on to another one this is lucky Lucky is a black knob sawback turtle, so also a type of, of map turtle 
these are just considered a narrow headed map turtle so they have a more narrow <clears throat> a narrow head two or three years ago i gave landark a turtle who i had named lucky hope he is doing well this is probably him lucky so if you are the one who found him at a water treatment plant and brought him to us then this is him um so lucky here Look at those cool knobs on his back. So the reason his name is Lucky is because he was found in a water treatment plant. So where water goes to be cleaned before it arrives at your faucet. And then he had gotten stuck in those, that, that place. And, you know, they think that he probably got bleached or um, his shell is not quite right from being in that water treatment plant. So we still can't see those pretty patterns and he came to us and he was he was pretty pitiful being stuck in that water treatment plant but some good samaritan um rescued him out of there and brought him to us and so we got permission to have him as well because he is another protected species like all of these map turtles and so he's doing quite well now he couldn't be released in the wild we don't know exactly where he came from before he got in that water treatment plant um, but these are, are cool little turtles as well. And so, once again, males are much smaller than females. They like uh, lakes and or mostly rivers and creeks and streams and things like that. Slow moving, uh, mostly carnivorous. Let me show you their range map real quick. All right, and he has not grown much since he's been with us. We don't quite know why, but he eats well. And he seems to be doing well. It could have had something to do with being found in the water treatment plant. So this is a hatchling black knob sawback. And then an adult female. So that ridge, you know, kind of flattens out the older they get the females get much, much larger. So, and let's look at the range. And so this is the range which they can be found. And then this is their range in North America. So you can see they have a pretty small little range. And so this is one, you know, they consider um, decline because of people taking them and the pet trade, that same goes for the northern map turtle, Geo, that we just saw. Um, people taking them out, wanting to keep them as pets, has an effect on the wild population. So does habitat loss or changes to the habitat, like putting dams in rivers and stuff like that, that affects their populations. All right. And once again, these guys are carnivorous. Um insects for for males and things like that they don't know as much about their diet as much as some of the other map turtles according to my book uh, we feed mostly insects and worms to our our turtles here so let's look at our next one so there's an interesting story about these two little brothers and so these are, are still young. They have grown tremendously since we've had them. You can see their beautiful shell patterns much better than you can with the other turtles that I showed you. That is quite nice. So still very small. These are, there's an interesting story behind them because they are hybrids. And they are a hybrid between an Alabama map turtle, which is this, this is an Alabama map turtle, and a barber's map turtle. Now, so some scientists were doing some surveys. They were surveying turtles. And they came across a very interesting turtle. And they were trying to figure out what she was 
and they determined that she was this hybrid between a, an Alabama map turtle and a barber's map turtle. So let me show you why that's very interesting because the barber's map turtle, here's its range, little small sections and these being, being river and creek turtles, they are very restricted typically to, you know, one or certain rivers that they can be found and they don't often cross over because they like those large bodies of water. And so this represents two little river systems here in Alabama that the barber's map turtle is restricted to. All right, well, here's the Alabama map turtle and here's its range and it's restricted to these river systems and there is not any overlap between these two species so therefore they should not be hybrid between those two species but yet they are so the female that was found they determined that somebody probably it had to do with somebody having them as a pet or some kind of human influence that they moved turtles to where either, you know, they were either bred as a hybrid between the two or somebody was moving turtles around into areas that they shouldn't have been naturally. And when they pulled that female out, they realized she was gravid. And so she is now at a nature center and then all of her babies are at nature centers um, that have permits to be able to keep these because this is a, not a naturally occurring hybrid. So that's interesting and these are results of, of people um, messing with these species and you know they didn't want them in the wild anymore because it was a human caused thing and so they shouldn't be out there naturally this particular species. But we enjoy them here at the Nature Center. They are super cute. They are growing growing so fast like they should if they're properly cared for. So a lot of people think turtles will only grow as big as the um, container that you put them in. That's totally not true. Um, they will grow as long as they're being fed and taken care of correctly. And so these guys have really been putting on weight, eating well. Um, this is once again, females of this species when they become adults are mostly eating snails and mussels. Um, Males mostly eat insects, and so this is, and juveniles also would mostly eat insects, and so these are mostly carnivorous species as well. So, interesting things about map turtles, and map turtles I think are really beautiful, beautiful species, and a lot of other people think so too, which is why they have been um, taken out of the wild. So next time you see a turtle, at the, the lake or the river or a stream, t keep in mind that there are turtles out there that are protected and you should not move them around. And turtles, you know, like to be in their own little home range or they might be a habitat specialist and so if you decide to take it home for a little while, let it go somewhere else, that can cause a lot of problems. Um, and so keep that in mind and also keep in mind that turtles, they don't make very good pets um, for, for most people, not what people would expect because they live so long and have so many special requirements and get bigger than people think and they're not like the most cuddly, interactive kind of pets. Um, these guys would really like it if I quit messing with them. <laughs> um, but if you want to see some turtles, we do have them here at the Nature Center. Our building is still closed, our trails are still open, um, but as soon as our building opens back up, we will be letting you know on our Facebook page. And so hopefully you can come by and see some of our turtles, um, and then you don't have to take care of them, we'll take care of them, and you can come visit them. I think that works out nice if you like turtles. And you can come see the ones that we have here and ask us some questions. Is it, hopefully, I uh, didn't see any questions from anyone, but ask away if you have any. You can ask in the comments um, even after this is over. And if you liked this video, please like it and share it so that other people can see 
um, that we do these videos and hopefully tune in. The more people who like our videos and share them, um, that increases our chances of continuing to do these videos. So um, that's something that we we want to see that you're actually enjoying these videos so that we'll continue to make them. And just in time, the rain ended. And you can see that our rain garden is full. And actually the overflow is full too. And so, but that will, that water will go down fairly quickly um, due to the nature of the soil and all the plants planted in it. So it's cool. You got to see, you got a two for one today, learning about turtles and also seeing our rain garden in action, doing its job. So hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share as I said before and tune in next week for another video. And if you want to keep learning about turtles, we can do several other different kinds of groups of turtles. Alabama is number one in freshwater turtle diversity. So we have lots of turtle species here in Alabama and we have lots of turtle species here at the Alabama Nature Center to share with you. So let us know if that's something you want to keep learning about. Thanks everyone. Have a good weekend.